Hey VC, it's Jonathan, your cheap and cheerful record collector. Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Um, before we get started, I just want to once again thank all my new subscribers. I got a lot recently, I really appreciate it. Um, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you really like it, subscribe to my channel, hit that the bell so you get notified of any new uh, videos coming up. Uh, this is a uh, thread that started by Rob Walker. Uh, songs about 10 famous people. And when I heard the subject of the uh, thread, I immediately started thinking of what I could do. And the first one that popped up to my mind immediately was Woody Guthrie and his song, Pretty Boy Floyd. Um, the whole tradition of writing songs about real people probably started in the 14th century with English, English madrigals, et cetera, et cetera. But it's always been, especially in the folk uh, world, folk music, always been songs about real people, uh, good, bad, and indifferent. Um, Pretty Boy Floyd, great song by Woody Guthrie, sort of makes him out to be more of a, a folk hero than he really was. Um, he killed a number of people, robbed a lot of banks, uh, but he was from the same area in Oklahoma that Woody Guthrie was from. So they sort of elevated him to be more of a, like I said, a folk hero, a, a Robin Hood stealing from the rich, giving to the poor than he really was. But um, a lot of the songs about people, just like movies about real life people, are always, uh, you have to sort of give them artistic license to do what they want. So this is a great song by Woody Guthrie, uh, Pretty Boy Floyd. Uh, next one is a, there was a singer songwriter back in the 60s who I saw a number of times and always loved him, and it was Tim Harden. Uh, Tim Harden, you might know, because he wrote If I Were a Carpenter, uh, Misty Roses, uh, what else did he write that you might know? Reason to Believe, etc. This album is his third album, even though it says, yeah, Tim Harden 3, live in concert. Just great, great, great. And he has a song in here called Lenny's Tune about Lenny Bruce. Uh, this was recorded, I think, two or three years after Lenny Bruce died. Um, just fantastic. Not too much, uh, too, too many songs about Lenny Bruce. Um, he really is opened the door for so many comedians like George Carlin and Richard Pryor, et cetera, et cetera. They wouldn't have been if it hadn't been for Lenny Bruce. And Tim Harden pays tribute to him here on this album. Tim Harden in concert from 1963. Great album. Um, also, most of these are going to be in the folk uh, vein because that's really what I uh, started listening to when I was a kid. Uh, this folk singer also put a number of songs about the people on his albums and it's Phil Oaks and this is his album I Ain't Marching Anymore and on this album he has a song called That Was the President about JFK after he was assassinated and as Phil Oaks writes here my Marxist friends can't understand why I wrote this song and that's probably one of the reasons why I'm not a Marxist. After the assassination Fidel Castro aptly pointed out that only fools could rejoice at such a tragedy for systems, not men, are the enemy. Phil Oaks' song is called That Was the President about uh, the assassinated leader, JFK. Great song. Great album. Great musician. Uh, next one is a song people know, uh, I think probably for, through Johnny Cash, because he had a fairly big hit with it. But uh, the way I know it was before Johnny Cash recorded it. Uh, originally written by a man named Peter Lafarge, and recorded the first time I ever heard it was by Patrick Skye, and it is um, the Ballad of Ira Hayes. Uh, Ira Hayes was a Native American who signed up and fought in World War II and was one of the men that raised the flag over Iwo Jima in the Pacific, and then talks about how he came home from the war and he was sort of cast aside by society, especially being a Native American ended up uh, being an alcoholic, in and out of prison, and died very young. So very sad. But uh, Pat Sky did a great version of the song. And uh, like I said, originally written by Peter Lafarge, who is the guy in the far side over there with the hat on. That's Peter Lafarge. That's a picture of uh, Ron Ellen, Pete Seeger, Patrick Sky, and Peter Lafarge. So yeah, that's the song. Ira Hayes, again, another true story about a, a living person. 
Next one. This is an album that I had very young and really influenced me, and it turns out it influenced a lot of people. Uh, though it never was a big hit, it influenced a lot of singers like Bonnie Raitt and a lot of blues type singers. And there's an album called Blues, Rags, and Hollers. This is their second album called Lots More, More Blues, Rags, and Hollers with uh, Spider John Kerner, Tony Little Sun Glover, and Dave Snaker Ray. Uh, Blues, Rags, and Holler and Lots More were both recorded the same recording session and they just broke them up into two albums. I think this is the stronger album, but that's just me. On this album, they do a song called Lady Day and it's a tribute to Billie Holiday. And they say here, a tribute to Billie Holiday is one of the John's finest songs and almost perfect blend of words and music. The long talking part is a rather recent addition and a good one. John is seldom afraid to change and redo his songs in a constant attempt to perfect them. So this is John Kerner basically singing and playing about Billie Holiday. And the song is called Lady Day. If you don't know these albums, Blues, Rags and Hollers and lots more, and you're into that white blues, this was recorded in 1962, I think. Definitely check them out. Fantastic stuff. Another um, person, real person, where they wrote a song about, which there are many different versions, and this is the one, one of the ones I happen to have, and it is, uh, this artist is Utah Phillips, and the song is Joe Hill. Uh, Utah Phillips is a, was, was a singer-songwriter, uh, very much involved in the union movement and in um, civil rights, etc. And the song Joe Hill um, was about a real person, Joe Hill, who was a union organizer who was killed by the uh, uh, bosses back in the 1930s, I'm pretty sure, uh, during a copper mine strike. Um, there are a number of different versions of Joe Hill. There's a great version by uh, Joan Baez. She did at Woodstock on the Woodstock album, which is just stunning. But um, Utah Phillips, great singer-songwriter, passed away, I think, a year or so ago. And this is his album, We Have Fed You All a Thousand Years. Utah Phillips sings the songs and tells the stories of the industrial workers of the world, the Wobblies, the IWW. Utah Phillips, Joe Hill. Next one is another one by Woody Guthrie, but this was a song he never put music to. He wrote lyrics, and uh, after he passed away, many years later, uh, I think his granddaughter found all these notebooks where he had written lyrics to all sorts of songs on them and got in touch with Billy Bragg, and Billy Bragg got in touch with Wilco, and together they put out an album called Mermaid Avenue. So it's all Woody Guthrie lyrics, but it's all music uh, created by Billy Bragg and Wilco. And the song on here is a little bit off the track from what I'm getting at, but this is Ingrid Bergman about the great actress, which uh, Woody obviously had a thing for. So a fun song about Ingrid Bergman on the great album Mermaid Avenue by Billy Bragg and Wilco. Lyrics by the great Woody Guthrie. Uh, next one, again, in the folk music vein, this is someone I would have seen at the Gaslight in Greenwich Village back in 1964, 65, when I was 15, 16 years old. Saw this guy a number of times, just like I saw Phil Oaks there and Dave Van Ronk and all those people. And this is Tom Paxton. Uh, he was part of that whole group. And on this album, there's a couple of songs that I've real by people, but the one I want to talk about is a song called Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney. Um, if you don't know who they were, in the 1960s in the South, they had a voter education drive to get people signed up to vote. So buses of people came in to Mississippi from out of state and helped to get uh, African Americans signed up and registered to vote. Um, the local uh, Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists obviously were very much against this. And these three people... Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney, two white guys, one black guy. They were young in their 20s. They had just spent the day going around to different places trying to get people to register to vote. And they were driving home that night, and the Ku Klux Klan stopped them and ended up murdering all three of them uh, in, in a horrible way. And uh, they people were never found guilty. I think maybe many, 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 many years later. But at the time, they weren't. And it says here... Three men I never met and three more martyrs. The killers 
to the surprise of no one, are free and are heroes to their friends. They really thought they did the right thing, and for that reason, the song is dedicated to them as well. So, Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney by Tom Paxton. Um, no date on this, but it's got to be 64, 65, in that era. Great stuff. And one more, uh, two more. Uh, this one was written by Jerry Jeff Walker. I don't have his version of it, but I have his buddy's version of it, his good friend, and that's David Bromberg. And David Bromberg and Jerry Jeff Walker used to play this song all the time, they say, at night, in every club, on and on for months at a time. And, of course, it's uh, Mr. Bojangles, which is based on a true person that Jerry Jeff Walker met when he was thrown in the drunk tank in New Orleans, and he was there for a night or so, and there was a guy there who started dancing and singing, telling a story about how he had been in and out of jail and him and his dog would travel around and finally his dog died and what depression he went, went into because of that. And Jerry Jeff Walker wrote the song, Mr. Bojangles about him. And this is a great version by the great David Bromberg. There's David. And the last one I'm gonna do is by one of the greatest songwriters of our generation. And of course it's uh, Bob Dylan. And this is from his album, uh, The Times Are Changing. And it's a ballad of the, uh, the, where is it? The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. That's what it's called. The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. Again, like a lot of these songs, the details may not be exactly as it's uh, shown in the song, but the general idea is pretty accurate that she was a worker in a um, country club kind of place in the South in the 50s and got into an altercation with a younger man, a white guy who beat her to death with a club. And he basically got off like with six months in jail or something. And um, great song written by the great Bob Dylan, The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. So there you go. There's the 10 songs about real life people. Um, I want to thank Rob Walker for starting this thread. It's really been fun getting it together and doing it. And I um, hope everybody enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, peace.